Hey guys! So today we're going to be talking about how we implicate evolutionary biology in real life scenarios, especially using Nico Tinbergen's four questions. Nico Tinbergen's four questions refer to why something is the way that it is, and we can answer that question by asking four other questions. Questions addressing its function, its mechanism, its evolution, and its development. To expand a little bit on that, basically its function is why the trait that we're observing increases the organism's evolutionary fitness. The mechanism is the physical structure of, bi of how it does that, and the evolution is its phylogenetic history leading up to its current utility. Its development is the process by how the organism that has that trait acquires it during its lifetime. The interesting thing about Nico Tinbergen's four questions, like many other evolutionary theories, is that they can be taken out of their biological context and implemented to explain real life every Day scenarios. Let's talk about plastic spoons, forks, and knives for a second. These items are very, very popular during the summer months when people like to barbecue outside. Let's look at their evolutionary success using Nico Tinbergen's approach. First, we have to look at their function. The function of plastic spoons, knives, and forks is to increase our evolutionary fitness, just like any other trait would be. They achieve this by allowing us to eat very quickly and saving us the time of having to do dishes after we're done. The development of the plastic kitchenware would be the process of how they're made in a factory, perhaps how the plastic is melted and then poured into the mold. The evolution of plastic cutlery would simply be the history of how people have produced cutlery over the years, starting with rock formations, continuing to clay sculptures, going into metalwork, and then plasticware. The answer to Nico Tinbergen's fourth question about the mechanism of the plastic cutlery would simply be the material they are made out of, plastic, and the shapes or the molds they are poured into. When things go viral on the internet, contrary to popular belief, they don't go viral due to a set of chain reactions where your friend could share a video that they like, and you see it on their Facebook so you share it, and then one of your friends sees it on your Facebook so they share it, and one by one each of your friends share this video. Instead, when things go viral on the internet, it's due to hundreds of thousands of people worldwide sharing the same exact content within the same 60 seconds. So keeping this in mind, let's go back to Nico Tinbergen's four questions. The function of the viral link or video or picture or whatever content it is that you're sharing is to inform or entertain the general public. The development of the link would be the sharing history of it or how it got to the fame that it did, or perhaps the process of how the person that made the content made it in the first place. The mechanism by which it does that is a code, a binary code made up of a set of zeros and ones loaded with information that contain the content. The evolution of the link or the video or the picture that has been shared or went viral would be the history of previous content of the same format that came before it, similar videos, pictures, or links that might have inspired or influenced it. The last, but certainly not least, everyday situation that we're going to look at using this four-question approach is art trends throughout history. The development of art, something that came up is function and like just thinking about what David mentioned is kind of like well how did something come to be decorated? Development of art over time changed a lot in the early 1900s when photography came about and that changed the whole dynamic of how pictures were used and how um, it no longer became useful for a painting to just show a realistic point of view. So then you had a more avant-garde and um, you know, artists coming out and saying, well, since we already have the photograph or the camera, like we don't need to show a realistic point of view. So then that changed the whole dynamic of what art became. That was my classmate, Max, on Nico Tinbergen's approach to art trends throughout history. He talked about the function and the development of art throughout time. But let's just go back to the other two questions he didn't bring up. The mechanism of art would be the medium that it is created with. Sculpture would be clay, painting could be watercolor or oil, and so on and so forth. And the evolution or the phylogenetic history of the art would be very similar to the evolution of the viral videos that we talked about, being that it would be past creatives who inspired or influenced the current artwork. Hey guys, that's all I have for you on this week's video. Please remember to subscribe to our channel's Evo Seminar series and Evo TiVo and like this video if you enjoyed the content. Make sure to leave any comments or questions in the section below.